Source 20 here and welcome back to Border Town. Today is going to be a somewhat short episode as I'm going to be working on something that I really just wanted to leave for its own special episode. And that is going to be all sort of designated uh, kind of over the border patrol that's going to be pretty much focused along this border area that um, we've been working on over the last couple of weeks. And the reason why I wanted to leave it as one episode, not uh, cram it at the very end of the last one, is because I'm going to be showcasing some assets that have been very kindly created by Celsius. So if you guys, um, I might have missed this information, I have been trying to source some vehicles that will be custom made for this series. So Celsius got in touch and he's created some really amazing assets that I'll be popping down at the end of this episode and some other props that you'll see very shortly but pretty much he's created some police vehicles for Las Palmas that are special Las Palmas police. There's also some Mexican police that you'll see me place down and what I'm about to place down really shortly is the border patrol and this is something that I really needed for this series because you know couldn't possibly make a series based on a border without actually plopping down some border patrol and um, I think they fit really lovely and he's done a really fantastic job with them so massive thanks to him. You're going to be seeing me plopping down the prop versions really shortly and at the very end of the episode I'm going to be doing something really cool where I'm going to be painting down a bus line around this area because he's also created bus versions of those props which is really really cool and uh, they look so fantastic driving around here so I'm really excited for you to check them out as I get to it very shortly but I should probably just talk about what I just did because it is pretty cool as well and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out but I might need you guys to steer me in the direction of some assets on the workshop because it looks good but it's not like 100% what I want. So pretty much this train line goes over the border from the US to Mexico. I'm basing this off the one that actually sits in between Juarez and uh, El Paso. So I was trying to get as much detail as I could because it is such a prominent area and I really wanted to capture how it looked. Now this gate is so that people don't just walk across the train line and it also needs to open and close for when the train does go through and there is an in and then there is an out so you'll see me work on another bridge which is uh, goes in the other direction. I can't remember which direction is which because I'm Australian and I, I, I'm constantly getting confused <laughs> which way I should be controlling the traffic if you haven't noticed already. But I'm pretty happy with how this area turns out. I am pretty much just basing this basically off uh, pictures so do let me know how I'm going. I've just placed down some props that don't really fit. They're pretty, they're trying to make, they're trying to look like cameras basically. So there's cameras that sit around here and these are cameras just to monitor that uh, the trains don't have anything, anything extra on them as well and I think there's quite a lot of security around this area so you also see me place down some border patrol too and I think it looks great. I think it turned out um, aesthetically pretty cool looking but I don't know how accurate it is. You guys were super kind to me in the last episode about the inaccuracies I made with the trends that sit around here. So thank you for being so kind. Uh, you don't have to be that kind. Just like let me know if I could, if I can change some things or if um, you think something stands out that's an easy fix. I'm happy to do easy fixes. You know, if, if you tell me that the whole thing's wrong, I'm, I'm not, not going to change it. But if there's something that I can change that's not. Uh, to beak then I'm happy just to um, you know just do a quick little change but basically that gate that I made I really wanted to make it look like it was a big metal gate which what it is in real life but I just didn't really have the assets on me and it also needed to be non terra conforming which a lot of my really cool metal assets were so you know I just went with some brick wall which still sort of works but it's not perfect and you just saw me also place down some of those props that Celsius made, the border patrol that sit around here. He's done such a fantastic job with them, so massive props to Celsius, no pun intended. Uh, but I think they look really, really fantastic and it's something that was definitely needed just to add that bit of realism in this series. Now, something that's been brought up from time to time and that is 
I think in the first episode I spoke about how I'm taking inspiration from El Paso and Juarez, however not exclusively making that area. Um, and lately all I've done is really just copy straight off Google Earth. So I've totally been called out and um, I, I admit it, I am just copying at the moment. And it's kind of hard not to because, you know, so often I'm just floating around on Google Earth, just checking out places around El Paso and I am just massively inspired that I want to build something similar. And you'll be actually quite surprised that it is still very different than what I'm doing. I'm, I'm definitely not, I'm copying very similar styles, but I'm not copying particular areas uh, to a T. Though a lot of the road layouts and a lot of where uh, things sit in the city are very similar to El Paso, but what I'm sort of plopping down is on my own uh, own tangent. They, all the details that I'm putting down is are things that I wanted to place down in this series anyway, and I think we're kind of at the point where I am pretty shortly going to be doing my own thing, um, if not in the next episode, and you can hold me accountable for that. And I'll, I'll see how truthful I am by um, sticking to try to not just copy exactly what I'm seeing off Google Earth. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> we'll have to see how I go. But in fact, this particular neighborhood that I'm working on is a bit of my own creation because I wanted this area around Las Palmas to, at least the fringes of Las Palmas, to sort of represent neighborhoods that quite old and outdated and not like in the historical sense but in the sense that they'll probably mass built as a city grew in the 50s or something and now we're sort of getting to the time where the city is at a um, point where places this close to the actual downtown or the city are at actually hot property and places that need to be um, updated so it's they're probably areas that are going to be changed into either I, uh, you know, residential areas that are a bit more modern or areas that are going to be for uh, commercial districts or even industry. But in particular, these neighborhoods that I'm working on are sitting on blocks that are large and are either abandoned and probably need to be revamped with something brand new. And perhaps the people who own these houses are just waiting for the uh, whole area to be redone and that is waiting for somebody to come knocking at the door to be made an offer they can't refuse or maybe they just love the area and maybe some of the businesses around here have seen better days or maybe they're still getting that odd person who comes in and out and something that i'm going to add as well is um, quite a few motels either abandoned or still intact Either way, I think this area turned out really fantastic. I'm really loving the way that uh, this whole area turned out and I'm going to be probably building very similar things down the track that um, will reflect very similar styles of um, areas. So a lot of the areas I'm going to be making in um, Las Palmas is going to reflect places like this and especially around the train line. I think that suits it probably the best. So this whole area is going to be a mix of low commercial and some residential and there will, there will be some vacant lots too. And I'm probably going to revisit this area or areas like this, not, not in next episode, I'm going to move on completely next episode, but you know, definitely down the track somewhere uh, in a distant episode. So do let me know how you think this area turned out and if you'd like to see me uh, build more of these sort of areas and I'll definitely jump into that and you know, create some more very interesting districts because I think these are the sort of areas of the cities that I find probably the most fascinating. And I don't know why, but they just are. They're just fascinating. I always think back to what the history was in this area, even though these aren't particularly beautiful looking buildings. They're not buildings that are historical or, um, you know, beautiful pieces of architecture. But for some reason, whenever I see an abandoned lot or a uh, business that is sort of going under or a, a house that is old and just holding on to their lot even though they're right next to a train line or even though they're no longer in a bustling neighborhood it just they fascinate me i always wonder what's going on and what's the story behind all these places so there's gonna be quite a lot of places like this i imagine at uh, in las palmas and definitely in juarez there's going to be uh, loads more
But speaking of really bizarre areas uh, like abandoned buildings and old hotels, if you haven't checked out Taser's series, he's doing something very similar to what I'm doing right now and that's detailing this old abandoned uh, hotel and he's doing just that. He's doing pretty much a whole series based on that which is really fascinating and I've been really enjoying watching his creations and he's even got a couple of asset creators that uh, just doing an incredible job at designing assets of this very nature. I'm pretty sure this is the very assets that was created for his series. So definitely go and check that out if you're interested in what I'm doing right now. I think you'd be very much interested in um, his series and what he's doing. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go and check that out. And, and this last little thing that I'm doing with this neighborhood is I'm now placing down these houses and I'm basing these off the ones in El Paso. Now, how cool is this? So just walk, just like in street view walking around here and you can see how much this place has changed just even as I go in and out of this street, you can see how these houses were here once and then now they're not. And you can just see how much this whole area is, is being redeveloped. I remember somebody actually wrote something um, saying that El Paso is under a lot of change as of late and a lot of um, infrastructure has changed and a lot, of, a lot of neighborhoods have changed, which I find really interesting because that is sort of, that was sort of my understanding of uh, El Paso as well. And I think this is just like a great example of an area that is undergoing change because it is probably in an area that is very close to be redeveloped or rezoned for something completely different. So I wanted my neighborhoods to sort of represent that a little bit more, but if anything, this neighborhood is probably a little bit more intact than the one that's actually in El Paso. So I wanted to also just make sure that I, you know, had a couple more houses that were sitting around here as well. And for the very last little thing that I'm going to be doing is very cool. I want you to pay special attention, but these are the cars that uh, Celsius has made special for this series. What I've just done actually is I've just placed down a police station on the Las Palmas side and placed down all the Texas, the state Texas uh, vehicles that are going to be patrolling that particular area. And now I'm placing one down in Juarez and I'm just choosing the Mexican police to uh, patrol this particular area. And I'm going to do this cool thing where I'm going to go over the bridge and I'm going to select the different lanes yet, um, on the bridge so that they don't have any um, service vehicles actually crossing those bridges. And what that means is the Mexican police are going to stay on the Mexican side and then the US police are going to stay on the US side. And that way we'll only see those particular vehicles on either side of the border, which is accurate, which is great. And um, I'm really happy that somebody mentioned such an easy fix to what I thought was going to be a really complex situation. And then the last thing I'm doing is I've now just placed down a, a bus stop, uh, sorry, a bus station. And that bus station is going to be purely for vehicles that are going to be patrolling this area. And these are the Las Palmas patrol, the border patrol. And I'm trying to drag it around uh, the border, like all along, like to try and target as many of those dirt roads as possible that I've been dragging along. But also a couple of the roads just in Las Palmas in general, because I'd imagine they'd be patrolling very similar areas just around Las Palmas anyway. And then I can also select the type of vehicles that I want so that I don't have any random buses driving around. Um, who knows if I got it correct, but you should check out these cinematics because now they're all driving around. And I think it looks so damn cool. Celsius, you're a champion. I love your work and thank you so much for all your stuff. If they're in the workshop, go and give them some thumbs up, guys, because I think he much appreciates that and I'd appreciate you for doing that. Anyway, guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to leave some nice feedback. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd recommend you go and do that so you can get more of these videos more frequently. But anyway, guys, have a great week and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.